getting had in cargo shorts. Crazy, bro. It's the project, Princess E. It's the project. Okay. I got a new chair, guys. I know you probably don't care about that, but I'm excited about it. I told you guys I'd come on here and talk a little bit about some of the truly funny things, the, the more entertaining aspects of living in the project. And I've got to tell you, there are quite a few. Living on the first floor in a NYCHA development, I hear a lot of interesting conversations outside, right? Unfortunately, because a drug dealer lives above my bedroom window, uh, a lot of drug deals happen. I know he's breaking one of Biggie's commandments, right? But he has a lot of these uh, thought-provoking conversations, if that's what you want to call it. Because to me, I'm, I just be laying in bed befuddled. I refuse to have that window open because some of the shit I end up hearing is just like, you know? One particular conversation this past summer stands out to me, and I think about this shit daily. Like, I can be in there cutting up eggs for egg salad, and I think about what these men said. So boom, I'm laying there just minding my business, trying to go to sleep. These dudes start walking past, and they're having a casual conversation. They stop in front of my window, and they continue their conversation. One dude A, nah, nigga, I'm telling you, that, that fucking Manhattan, you know that, that, that place beyond the bridge? Right, I'm confused. Are you confused? I'm confused. I'm like, that place of, you mean the borough? You know? His other friend goes, nah, nigga, that's a different city. That's the city. That's why we call that the city. And I'm like, what? So you just said, sir, that's a whole nother city, like beyond the bridge. Okay, if, uh, this other dude comes in like, nah, 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 both you niggas are stupid. Where the fuck y'all went to? That shit just the neighborhood, you see? That's why, that's why they got Harlem and, and the Bronx and shit. Yeah, yeah, see, Manhattan is just the neighborhood. Now, I'm even more confused, because I'm like, what, now it's just the neighborhood? Y'all, what school did any of you go to? And this one dude, the quietest one, at this point, I'm peeking out the window to see who they are, right? And if I'm associated with anybody that could be so fucking stupid, the coolest of the group, group you know, guys can in his pocket. He, he hasn't said a word yet. He said in a low voice, nah, nigga, that's just some shit a white nigga made up. Now, I'm like, Lord, because I, okay, it's okay. Here are the options. Now, are you with me? We have one dude said that it was its own city, right? You have another dude that said, called it a place, you know, beyond the bridges. Another dude said that it was, <laughs> another dude said it was just some shit a white nigga made up with the complexity in that sentence is a whole nother thing to break down. And I'm sitting there questioning to myself, should I tell them? Should I be like, hey, Manhattan is a borough within the jurisdiction of the city of New York, which consists of five boroughs. But I, I, I didn't even want to go far into that, right? And I think they're part of a larger group that just walks around and loiters in the fuck out of pocket. I have no idea if they live here or not. They just be around having the most mind-boggling conversation. And to me, it be the funniest shit. Like, I honestly look forward to walking past these people when I'm walking the dog or something. Another example, just the other day, me and my man are walking the dog outside, right? We're walking, having a conversation, and he's even just calling me something, right? And I hear him, but I also hear out of this ear, you know, walking the dog, nah, getting head in cargo shorts, crazy, bro. And I had to turn and be like, what the fuck? What did he get it? You know, and he <laughs> his like, yeah, yeah, you gotta get that, you know, you gotta get that, that, that shit, right? That you gotta bring it down a little bit, now your ass crack on the bench. I'm like, what is going, what are you guys talking about? Like, are you guys seriously talking about receiving oral, you know, mm -hmm. in cargo shorts? Very specific, by the way. Outside, because you mentioned the bench. Like, why are you outside? Why do you have cargo pants on, on of all things? Why do you remember this actor? And why are you saying any of this out loud? I had so many questions, and I, I was listening. I was like, hold on, hold on. I I'm gonna let you finish on my Kanye shit. But did you just hear what they said? And he's like, nah, what? I repeat it. He's like, yo, seriously? I'm like, yeah. And it was funny because he was actually wearing cargo shorts <laughs> at that moment. And he was like, uh, I can't say I've noticed a, such a specific difference, but okay. Like, it's just a bunch of dudes. This huge soft effect around the benches. We all know that image, right, of guys talking, smoking, drinking on the benches in the project. That's exactly what that was. But they have the most strange, they have the strangest conversations that just make me question everything about being here. And I honestly sometimes want to jump in and just auto-correct them. You know, be like, you guys, this is not a politically correct, this is kitchen table talk y'all are having while children are coming home from school. Like, I, 
entirely with you. But that, that's a whole nother thing. There was another argument that just happened and I actually considered going to check the mail or not because the argument was happening outside by the mailboxes just to see what was going on. But over these crackheads, right? And they were having arguments. Now, no, they weren't crackheads. Now the problem is, the reason why I say they weren't crackheads is because in between sentences, they would nod off. It was the funniest shit. It was like the longest run on sentence you could ever imagine. Then, so the girl, right? So the girl be like, and, and fuck you, cause the, the and all that shit. Cause, and that, that went on for like 20. I was at the people, I was at the people like, <laughs> losing my mind because it was just the funniest thing how are you high and upset isn't that the whole point of getting high so you're fucking with me to, to relieve yourself to escape but you escape to a darker place i don't i don't get the logic in that you know what i'm saying and it's it just it's self-defeating like it is the most hilarious thing in the world another thing i was in my house this past summer right just chilling in the house doing nothing i get a knock on my door and dog's going off i'm like who the fuck? who could that possibly be because every Everyone knows if you're gonna come to my house or whatever, if we didn't already schedule it, call me and let me know, text me something. Don't just knock on my door. That gives me huge anxiety. Cause as a kid, when people knocked on my door to come in, they wouldn't leave for months. So cousins and uncles and all the creep crawlies that used to leave, you see how shakily I am. So they would look at me weird and my parents still let them in. They, oh, that's a whole nother story. So I have weird anxiety around door knock because of my upbringing. And I go, I'm sorry, short. I go see who that is. It's some random girl. I have never seen before in my life, right? So she's like, I'm so sorry to bother you. Two things. Do you have sugar for Kool-Aid? And can I use your bathroom? Now, in my head, I'm looking at her like, uh, I was like, what made you knock on this door? So I asked her, what made you knock on this door? She's like, well, you're the closest thing. And they told me a female lived here and, I, and they didn't know the other people. I'm like, but they knew who lived here. I don't even know who you're talking about. So she's like, nah, 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 it's not a setup or anything. I'm glad she's probably from the hood also and knows that that's exactly what it looks like. She's like, I just really need to go. I probably, you could check, you could check my bag. I don't have no nonsense. I'm not trying to do anything. I really need bathroom. And we have like drinks, but we need a chaser. And I have Kool-Aid in my purse. She shows me the Kool-Aid. And she's like, you know, we got some water, but the sugar was a bit too expensive. We just needed some white sugar. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Come use the bathroom. Cause I wanted to, do, you know, have some sort of hospitality, right? I let her use the bathroom. And I gave her some sugar. Asked about, you know, how big of a, a water thing she needed. And you know, for, they say, her cup of water Kool-Aid is like a half a cup of sugar, I think is the measurement. So I gave her like two cups of sugar or something like that. And she was so grateful. I have never seen her again. <laughs> Her or her friends, never again. But that was just a moment of hospitality, I think was important for me and her as well. She, you know, she had, had time and need. And instead of peeing outside the window or peeing in an alley thing outside, the, also outside my window, everything's outside my window because I'm on the first floor. She decided to ask somebody, specifically someone who's female, so she can use their facility. She didn't steal anything from the bathroom. And she honest, gave an honest answer as to why she needed sugar. And they sat out there and had fun. They didn't blast music. They were just sitting in the park drinking and chilling. Here, I want to get back to moments like that. Although it was funny at time and it's entertaining to think about. Little snapshot of community like that is no longer seen here. We don't see much of people interacting with each other on a positive level, doing neighborly things like checking in on each other and making sure everyone has their packages, um, you know, opening the door for one another, simple things like that. Me personally, when I first moved here, I was so angry and consumed by the anger and mistrust of the people here. I am not only didn't want to establish, you know, these relationships with people, I outright jumped it. Like, I refused. You know, I'd go out in the hallway with my stage and I'd place out not only my house every Sunday, but also the hallway and stuff and weird out the guy smoking there. I think I developed a bit of a crazy lady on the first floor um, stereotype. So I was fine with that. As long as people left me alone, I was okay with like occasional weird look. And every time I'd come out my front door, people were looking at the elevator like, and then pretending not to look. I was fine with that. Now, as I get, as I I get older as my son gets older as we've been here longer and I look at other communities and I visit other communities when visiting family and friends and I see how it's supposed to be. I, it, it makes me sad that not only are you isolated here but you're ostracized if you don't indulge in the fuckery. If you're not into that ghetto ratchet you know blasting music all the time tonight, smoking, drinking, just being outwardly aggressive for no reason, you're labeled uh, 
wanna be white, white girl, you know, weirdo, all of these things. And it's a shame to me, personally. And I'd like to have more of a sense of community. That's why I wanna leave here, because I know here, that can't happen. That's not even remotely a possibility of happening. But maybe it is. Maybe I'm just more cynical because of my experience here. Maybe I'm more cynical because I have family members, uncles I see on a daily basis, uncles that were arrested in that raid I talked about in my previous video about how I inherited this apartment in the first place. We do we do not speak to each other at all. I refuse to speak to them because I know, you know, they stole hundreds of thousands from my grandparents. And they won't speak to me because they're afraid I'll call the police on them. I've tried, honestly, I've tried for, but the police didn't do much. So I'm like, you know what, whatever. As long as they leave me alone, I'll leave them. And I hate having to live like that. Like literally, a, a, a five minutes before I started recording this video, bye. one of my uncles passed by. And it's, it's funny in a way, but it's also not so funny because it's like, bro, this is the home you grew up in. You grew up here. We are family. I, I've known you all my life. <laughs> You've always lived here because he's like a dope head and um, crack addict and he also sells drugs on the side and stuff apparently and booze items. All my life I knew him. And to go from that to being mortal enemies when I first lived here because he like bang on the door at random times at night. He'd throw trash at my door. Um, and I called the police several times and you know, had a police report for all of these things, but nothing was ever done. So I just gave up on it. He gave up on harassing me, especially once um, I got my, my son's father and I got back together and he moved in here and my dog, <laughs> it definitely doesn't bother me now. It doesn't even look my way. But I just find it so strange how we can go from family to enemy. And that pipeline is it's a very, very thin line between that. And I feel like this environment facilitated that. My hatred and resentment towards him and the rest of my family for being the way that they are because they endured things like the AIDS epidemic and pack epidemic. And it got the best of them. And to me, I'm not having not lived through something that serious. I and with with access to more information in life just in general, I have it this sort of like I look at them like these lowbrow cavemen who who should have worked harder to oppose the influence of drugs and alcohol when in reality that's all they had turned to. And with maturity and with more understanding and research, I now understand that. But it does not it doesn't expel my anger totally. I'm still angry that you would treat a family member this way on both sides. I'm so I'm honestly upset that I don't really have it in this family. These people, one thing Maya Angelou said, she said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. I believe those people when I was a child. I couldn't wait to get and become an adult, so I didn't have it with them at all. But that's sad. That's really sad. That is really sad. And I'm glad I put my put such a heavy boundary between me and them because come to find out years later, those those cousins, uncles and, and aunt are sexual predators. And it's really discouraging to know that as a child, I felt that evil and felt the need to fend myself off from them. And I did so quite well because everyone viewed me as mean and fat, which I was. I used food to fluff myself up a bit more to protect myself. One, not only physically, but in an attractive date and two being a mean one they wouldn't want to be around and i thought that was my personality for such a long time i mean it's laughable now but as an adult i can say no that's not how i am i'm a much kinder human being than i i could afford to be back then because if i was any other stupid kid which i should have had the right to be i would have been big enough. i know that third and it's up it's up you know that that part's not funny but i am grateful for how i turned out versus could have turned out but now it's time to really press down the pedal and go even further and i implore you to do so i want you to go further than you've ever imagined in your wildest dreams you would because you can and that is entirely up to you and i i truly 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 want to thank all of you who subscribe to my channel this has been a two-week journey i never wanted to put myself out there like this because i was afraid of whether or not people would care and if i had one person that cared I, I, it would blow my mind i have two and I shout out to all of y'all. I really, 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 really do appreciate every one of you. And in my next bit, I have something deeper I want to talk about as far as the mentality and what it takes to live here for the rest of your life and generationally like me. And my attempt to break out of that, break free of that mold and build generational wealth in the project. So if you want to be a part of that journey with me and discover that journey for yourself, please, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing. I want to build a community so we can restore each other, restore the hood, restore hope. And I think the best way to restore hope is through education, educating yourself, not only going to college, but developing a technical skill. Like I'm a nail technician, I'm a trained and licensed nail technician. Like you could be a plumber, an electrician, all of these things, right? Or formally go to school or even Google. Google 
Google, guys. Google is education. Just if you know better, you do better, right? I believe that manifestation, thinking things into existing, believing what you want, and being the change you want to be, right? All of these things are so powerful in really molding that reality that you want, that you desire for you, right? But most importantly, those two things cannot happen without the fucking. You need to love yourself enough to do better by yourself and hold yourself to that standard. I want you to hold yourself to that standard. I'm holding you that to that standard. I want you to hold me to that standard. Let's be better together. Subscribe as a, whatever I find out, I'm gonna bring on here. Whatever wisdom I can accrue and explain to you guys, I will do so because I don't want only me and my son and my partner to get out of here. I want everybody to get out of here. But not only leave, I want it to be better for the people who have no other option, right? So thank you guys. There's been some funny moments. There's been some sad moments. There's been some introspective moments. But all of these moments add up to this thing I call, you call, life. I appreciate you. I love you all. Thank you. Subscribe, like, follow, and I'll see you in the next one.